But uh, up first today is uh, Remy Mushara. Uh, he will be presenting new and upcoming features in Tomcat uh, 10.1 and beyond. And uh, thank you very much for attending. Take it away. All right. Thanks, Chris. So thanks for joining. So I'll be presenting about the new features now. So my name is Remy Moshera. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. I was, I was contributing to Tomcat for quite a while now, since 2000. And I'm also an ASF member. So first, we'll be starting with the state of the project. Uh, Mark Thomas is usually doing that. He's allowing me to share with you some of the content he's using for that presentation, usually. Uh, most of the talks this year will focus on Jakarta IE, how we are doing the transition to Jakarta IE 9 and 10. And then we'll focus a bit on the connectors and other miscellaneous areas of novelty stuff in Tomcat. Uh, there are some demos in the presentation, but I'll be doing them at the end, since it's hard to mix up like the screen sharing with uh, the slides and stuff, it would be unwidely to try. So I'm doing the, I have three demos, hopefully I have time to do them and I'll do them at the end. All right, so first we'll start with the state of the project. Uh, one change we did this year was to switch over, uh, switch over around a bit the risk managers. Uh, since Mark Thomas was uh, doing all the risk management for all races, uh, this allowed us to share the load a bit with more people and have better risk mitigation in case someone is un unavailable for some time. So uh, right now, Christopher Schultz is doing the 8.5 releases and I'm doing the 9.0 releases while Mark Thomas is still doing all the other releases, including Tomcat Native. Uh, so you can see the current releases for Tomcat. Um, basically, we have a jump in Java versions for the new 10.1 branch and that's the biggest uh, novelty at the moment. <clears throat> We've had a few notable security issues this year. Uh, all, those are, uh, all these were important level, so none were critical, but still notable. Uh, first one is an information disclosure on NTFS. Uh, basically, uh, Tomcat relies on file, ca file canonicalization for security, especially like case sensitivity, so there was um, a discrepancy in the GVM behavior in that area with NFS, I, I think. And so this caused um, uh, um, basically uh, this allowed bypassing security constraints. So that's an information disclosure. Uh, we have another security issue with uh, an encrypted HTTP2 uh, caused by incorrect buffer handling following the uh, preamble of the connection, too bad. Uh, we've had a request smuggling, uh, which was called by uh, mishandling of the transfer encoding request header with HTTP 1.0. Obviously, it would only happen with a client uh, trying to exploit problems, since it's not very common to use that kind of header with HTTP 1.0. Um, well, basically, the, the, the Tomcat behavior was not consistent with the specification and uh, mixed with uh, a proxy, which wouldn't do the same thing. It could cause request smuggling. Last, we had a few days ago uh, a denial of service problem, uh, which affected an IO when using OpenSSL, uh, especially crafted TLS packet could cause a, a loop, basically, in the open SSL engine code, which would cause then a DNA of service by uh, exhausting CPU resources. So be sure to update. <laughs> this year, we, we said goodbye to Tomcat 7.0. The last release was in April. It was 7.0.109. So that were quite a bit, quite a number of releases. So well over 100 actually releases being made, having been made. So that's quite a lot. Goodbye. <laughs> So that was our monthly release schedule for this year. We tried to adhere to a monthly schedule and we've been very successful this year, except in January. We are planning to do a January release, but stuff happened. Basically some regre uh, I don't think it was regressions, but we found some bugs that needed fixing. And so the release slipped for a few weeks. 
<clears throat> so notable races are in red. Uh, basically, the first milestone of 10.1. 10 Just checking. Okay. Yeah, uh, the first stable release of 10.0 and then the last release of 7.0. So general resources for the project, we have uh, GitHub, which you can use for PRs or uh, common integration also and stuff like that. Uh, we can contribute to translation at Poeditor. Uh, we have quite a few complete languages now, but uh, a lot of others are stalling. So we could use more contributions there, especially I think German and Spanish are, are in the middle, but could uh, it would be nice to see them at 100% like some other languages. Uh, you can also check the past presentations for ApacheCon and hopefully we'll have a non-virtual Tomcat event again sometime, that would be nice. Okay, so the big topic this year was Jakarta IE support. It started last year and it kept us busy, especially Mark Thomas, who, who did quite a, few, a lot of it. So we did Tomcat 10.0. It's now stable. It's, a, it's the start of the plan, which was get, discussed last year and which is in the wiki in detail. Uh, it implements Jakarta, uh, the specifications from Jakarta IE 9 that are relevant to Tomcat. It no longer has support for Java IE 8. Uh, it's Jakarta IE TCK tested now. Uh, it will have a short support life cycle and we will be superseded by Tomcat 10.1 since we don't expect Jakarta IE 9 to have a uh, long lasting interest from people since basically it's functionally identical to Java IE 8. <clears throat> so now we are here, we are doing 10.1 milestones with uh, the first uh, support for Jakarta IE 10 as uh, features are being added to it. Uh, we have uh, API and behavior changes over Jakarta IE 9 and in particular as Mark mentioned, just mentioned it, it was uh, removal of all deprecated items from the servlet API. <clears throat> so next we expect Tomcat um, 10.1 to become stable. Uh, we'll have, um, after that's done, we'll EOL Tomcat 10.0 and we'll have a, a companion Tomcat 9.10 9 release that will be the Jakarta IE equivalent of uh, Tomcat 10.1. Basically, it will be the same as uh, 10.1 with the support of the old Java IE uh, specification from, for servlets. Otherwise, uh, all the APIs and features will be identical. This will allow produ us producing uh, Tomcat 9 Java E8 uh, compatible um, software uh, with, uh, with fewer, I mean, with a lower maintenance effort for us. So next we will move to Tomcat 11 with Java, Jakarta E11 support. Uh, we'll have also a Tomcat 9.11 uh, branch. Tomcat 9.0 support will continue at this time. Uh, Tomcat 9.10 will be AOL and Tomcat 8.5 will be well when Tomcat 11 is released. Then we'll move on to Tomcat 12 with Jakarta E12 support. Uh, also with the Tomcat 9.12, Tomcat 9.0 support will continue and Tomcat 9.11 will be old. Uh, you'll be supposed to migrate to Tomcat 9.12 at this time. Then it goes on like this with Jakarta E13. At this time, unless there's further interest and uh, available manpower for it, we expect Tomcat 9.0 to be to reach its end of life. <clears throat> then things will go on like this uh, for all Jakarta E releases uh, in the future. Okay, to help you migrate from Javax to Jakarta, we have developed a, a migration tool. It was already there last year. Uh, the, uh, the new feature this year is that it's now integrated in inside Tomcat deployment. So it will make things easier uh, as long as um, web apps are compatible. <clears throat> so I have a migration tool demo. I'll do it at the end of the presentation. Uh, basically, it will focus on migrating the example web app and taking advantage of the auto deployments. 
Okay, uh, then we focused a lot on uh, on connectors and HTTP2 this year. Um, one main focus for HTTP2 was improve uh, stability. <clears throat> Let me check the question just in case. All right. Okay, so the, um, one area in particular is the window update algorithm. Uh, is quite complex and needs a lot of refactorings and fixes along the way. Also, we fixed uh, we found and fixed some complex TLS issues, uh, mostly in the OpenSSL engine that was introduced more recently, but also in the uh, general NIO code wrapping the SSL engine. Uh, also, an area similar to the window update is uh, uh, overhead heuristics, uh, which are basically since HTTP2 is a rather chatty protocol. Uh, there's a need to filter out like clients which are misbehaving or trying to din to use a DOS attack on the server, maybe by sending uh, content like one byte at a time, all wrapped in a big frame with, I don't know, padding or whatever. And so we have heuristics to filter this out. Basically, if you try to send like 10 uh, one byte <clears throat> frames with uh, padding or whatever, then the connection will get will get terminated early <laughs> to protect the server. So we had bugs in this area, as usual, with complex stuff. And so this needed to be fixed and improved. Uh, another feature that was added in the uh, Java 16 plus is uh, Unix domain socket support. So it's now supported in Tomcat in the NIO connector. So if, you, if you're using Java 16, you can now use Unix domain sockets to connect to a proxy server. So NIO and APR have support for it. I'm going to show a demo with uh, NIO later on. So in Tomcat 10.1, we've now removed the APR connectors for HTTP and AJP. Uh, it's been advertised in Tomcat 10.0. Uh, the goal is basically makes things easier for us by removing stuff that are hard to support. So moving along, you'll, uh, we'll focus on the NIO connectors and the OpenSSL support that goes along with uh, NIO connectors, but the full uh, native connector will now be removed. So the APR connectors were unsupported in Tomcat 8.5, 9.0, and 10.0. So we'll be able to still use them for quite a while. Uh, also, there was some backport of uh, simplified NIO code to Tomcat 9.0. Uh, it works better on newer OSCs and JVMs like Java 8. So it's not been backported to Tomcat 8.5 just in case it, goes pro it causes problems on older platforms. We don't have the resources to test out everything, so it's better to skip that. So I'll do a demo on, a, uh, on Unix domain sockets later on. Uh, basically, very simple, show the configuration and connect to it with a simple client. Let me see any question. All right. <laughs> yeah, migration can get very <laughs> big, so... Uh, We'll have a look at the current client, uh, the current migration tool. All right, so another area that we, we did this year was migrate uh, legacy code to data sources or introduce data source usage, well, uh, in some parts that were where it wasn't used. The general goal is better scalability and, uh, I mean, better usability of Tomcat. So a new user database was uh, introduced long after the original memory use database was added, like 20 years after, basically. <laughs> it was quite funny. Some, some people were wondering if we should not renew, uh, remove uh, user user database. So I tried doing that to see how it worked. So the, set the setup is quite similar to data source realm. And it's meant to be more scalable than memory user database while, while retaining its features, like being able to uh, use a tool to add and remove users. Uh, Jamix use, I'll show its behavior actually during the demo. 
So there was a session store based on JDBC. Uh, it also supports, uh, it's also used to support mm -hmm. data sources just fine. The problem is that the JDBC code was uh, very intrusive and uh, basically the code was written as if it was using a single connection everywhere. So the scalability turned out to be very bad. So some user uh, reported that uh, it was very bad since there was a big lock on our operations. <clears throat> so he suggested uh, basically removing the locks if we were using a data source, which was a great plan actually. So we did that thanks to its content, thanks to his contributions. And we went a bit further since uh, now in 10.0, uh, the, the original JDBC store is removed. It's replaced by a, a data source store. So the session store will have to use for with the database, we'll have to use a data source instead. Uh, so it's been, uh, the data scalability has been backported uh, and also the JDBC store remains available in 8.5 and 9.0 for compatibility. Of course, if you're using it in your uh, existing configuration, it's still there. Uh, it's not recommended to use because after uh, reviewing it, it was very bad. So I'm going to do a demo with uh, the data source user database then. Uh, other miscellaneous features, uh, we have uh, still the ahead of time compilation, which gains in maturity. Um, if you have a look at the previous presentations, basically it was full of missing features and problems. And now, as you can see, the, um, the missing features list is quite small. Uh, actually, it's not even worth talking about. So it's a good thing and it's getting ready. Basically, it's more mature and doing great. Uh, one thing we did since we were uh, forced to upgrade the Java platform with uh, Jakarta IE 10, uh, we moved to the Tomcat, the Tomcat code base to Java 11. Uh, finally, we were able to move off Java 8. Uh, so we removed, uh, Mark removed use of the finalized um, code. Uh, it's not a hack, it's code, but you know, <clears throat> well, and now we use uh, a much cleaner, uh, cleaner uh, class from the Java 11. It looks much nicer actually. Also some really nasty NIO workarounds uh, were removed. Uh, for example, uh, when you wanted to close a channel, it could deadlock, so that's bad. And like when you, I find it funny that closing a socket can deadlock, but that's when can happen with NIO. So, Workarounds for that could be removed finally, so that's a great that's a great thing. <clears throat> Another item we added is kind of kind of good. It sh we should have added that earlier, I think. But uh, basically, it's, uh, it allows an authenticator to to examine the request and uh, indicate if it can complete the authentication without further information or challenge. So that allows basically more accurate behavior of the authenticator. Uh, we optimize also uh, application annotation scanning, which is very important since uh, um, some applications have thousands of jars and basically it can take a long time to scan everything for annotations or other components like, for example, the handle types and everything. So. We have filtering and and also uh, parallel scanning now in place with the utility executor instead of having sing having it being single thread. So basically, it can help for more the, the deployment time of type of uh, time of some uh, specific applications. <clears throat> so Mark did a lot of work on JSP and EL optimizations too. Now uh, the JSP code, the generated JSP code is more efficient. And also an important area is uh, type conversion in explain the expression language, since it's one, one of the most costly uh, operations. There's even uh, a string, uh, an interface to, pro uh, to provide a like customized uh, type conversion, if you really know what you're doing. That's for export level use, but it can reap some interesting performance benefits. Uh, also for more flexibility, 
uh, when including or any uh, things like that. Uh, there's uh, some options to strip uh, byte order mark from static files. So um, you have to ponder the behavior of each options, but uh, this can really help out in some cases. <clears throat> so you have three options, basically true we are, uh, to strip if present, <clears throat> uh, false, and pass true. Basically, you, you won't strip, but uh, uh, the, uh, the configure file encoding will be used to read the resource. So you're, you have to know what you're doing, but it allows more flexibility with those uh, uh, car set indications, which can conflict with uh, request car set otherwise. So wrapping up, and before wrapping up, actually, uh, I'm going to check if there are some immediate questions. <clears throat> All right, so I'll move on to the demo now. So I'll switch to my screen sharing. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, big zoom. All right, so first demo, I have the migration tool. And so I'm going to try to migrate um, the Tomcat 9.0 examples web app, which has a bit of everything in it. So it's a good, I think it's a good example to do a migration with. All right. Let me do that here. So I'm copying the examples web app here. <clears throat> All right, and then let me add it in Tomcat 10. We'll see what it does. <clears throat> All right. Let me start Tomcat and you'll see. Okay, so I have some, um, some errors, but don't worry, it's for Unix domain sockets because I didn't enable Java 17 yet. <clears throat> so if you want to have a look, where is that? Mm. Oh, I'm not on the right Tomcat. <laughs> All right, let me go to Tomcat 10 instead. All right, and this will produce an error deploying the examples, obviously. So to use uh, the new the new feature, like the new uh, auto deployment, uh, auto conversion and deployment, you have to use uh, a new folder, which is web app Java, Java e by default. There's a configuration options option on the on the host to do that. So I'm going to drop it here. And then you'll see extra logging for the conversion, um, which already went through. Okay. <clears throat> Let me see. Did I mess up? Oh, yeah, I messed up. It's web apps with an S. All right. <clears throat> And there we go, it should work now. Yeah, so see it's deployed and there should be some info about the migration, which is here. Basically, you see it will do the migration. If I try to connect to it now. As you can see, I'll have the, uh, no, not this one. Maybe the snake, you'll have the WebSockets stuff running just fine. So that's a good thing. All right. Uh, we have also a uh, common lines option for this. So I'm going to have a quick look with you with, uh, on that. So to run, uh, to run it, you just uh, run the shaded jar that's in the zlib folder. So this is the name and basically of, of particular interest, uh, if the auto deployment doesn't work, uh, you have the zip in memory feature, which allows converting like uh, complex situations. Like if you uh, 
Uh, if you have entries in the zip which aren't compressed and things like that, it can happen with Spring Boot and other software. Uh, you have exclusions also. If things really fail, <laughs> uh, basically the stuff you'll have to you exclude, you'll have to deal with by, deal with by hand. You can also display a final log level. It will then show you which classes it, it's processing. You can, you can use that to spot problems and where problems really happen. <clears throat> so I'm going to show quickly Unix domain sockets since I'm quite running out of time now. All right. So I need to, uh, okay. I need to start Java 17 now equals, uh, All right, there we go. Then I'm starting Tomcat, and as you can see, you'll see uh, more connectors uh, with this socket information instead of the port. If you want to look at the, um, at the configuration, it looks like this. <clears throat> okay, for the connector, uh, Basically, if you're on Java 17, you can use Unix, so Unix domain socket path instead of the port. And you give it a path. Uh, it will then create a socket right where your launch it, um, you did launch to your Tomcat instance. Well, basically, the two, the two sockets are here. Now, if you look at the sockets, uh, of, important, of note is the permission that is using. Uh, by default, it will be read write for the user only. So if you're using uh, another process on another user, it won't be able to connect to the socket. So in that case, you also have to set uh, Unix domain socket path permissions, uh, Unix, Unix domain socket permissions, and uh, with a read write, dash read write for dash read write. And that will allow setting uh, a socket that you can that other users can write to. <clears throat> so with that socket in place, I can connect to it with a curl because curl supports Unix domain sockets now. So the command line is curl. Uh, okay, I have to do it insecure because uh, that's a that's a TLS connector. Yeah, it is insecure. Okay, that dash. Oh no, I need to switch to the right folder, of course. Uh, Right. Yeah, my socket is here, so everything's good. Okay, so let me connect to the, the OpenSSL one. It doesn't really matter since once connected, it's just fine. And then you use a URL um, uh, as usual. It needs a valid host name, but it's fake. So basically I'm using HTTPS localhost with slash and it will just display the root page of the, of the Tomcat, which is basically the world's uh, the HTML of the welcome page. So we just connected to the true using Unix domain sockets. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> does it work with the G full Jira? I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully. So, well, I only have one minute, but I want to show a bit the data source user database, at least the configuration probably won't have time to do much more. So basically the user database was using a memory like XML based database. Configuration is here in the server.xml is the default basically. And now it can also use a data source backed one. Uh, it uses a different object factory, obviously. So declaration is the same. Uh, it has some uh, configuration options which are very similar to the data source realm. 
Uh, basically, you can use uh, the simplest configuration from the data source realm, or then add some uh, roles and groups tables to store the extra features of the user database. <clears throat> you also have the read-only force to be able to edit it with a tool like JMX. It will connect to the associated uh, data source, which is specified as data source name. Basically, it needs to be in the same JNDI con context. I had prepared uh, a data source that was using Postgres. So too bad, don't have time to do it. Uh, unfortunately, the timing is much shorter, like 40 minutes is way too short, yeah. Yeah, five minutes, okay. So uh, we have time to do questions if needed. So does anyone have questions? Uh, if nobody has questions, I'll continue with the user database demo. I had one quick question, Remy. All right. Um, do you know what happens if you try to deploy the same application context path in both the web apps and the migrated web apps directory? No, it would fail. The, the <laughs> right. thing is that it just migrates to the uh, to the target path you're giving it. So. Oh, so you'll likely overwrite whatever was there if you did it. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure actually. I have to check. Uh, but the thing is that hopefully it doesn't just override. Uh, it will just not do anything that would be the best. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> but yeah, Thanks. Well, obviously, basically. Uh, the migration tool will deploy, the, will convert, actually, migrate, migrate the application you have in your legacy app base, which is web apps Java E by default, to the usual web apps. So basically, you'll have uh, another converted, migrated, migrated web app in your web apps folder, as usual. And it will look like a normal web app once migrated, hopefully. But that's, of course, if everything works, basically, there are all, always very, very complex web apps out there. So, well, we, we right. didn't hear many complaints, but I'm not sure how many are already using Tomcat 10.0. So, so we're eagerly waiting to see what's happening in the real world. Right. Yeah, if anybody's using this, please. Uh, get on the user's mailing list and let us know how things are going. Yeah, I'm really missing the extra 10 minutes. I think I had I had 10 more minutes last year. Yeah, I think they were an hour apart the, uh, last year. This year, they're 50 minutes apart. So Yeah, 40 minutes is too much for my minutes. Go for it. I just want to make sure that, uh, that everybody has enough time to get to the next session. So yeah. the next session starts in seven minutes. If you'd yeah. like to go ahead and do a demo, you're welcome to. OK, uh, well, all right. Yeah, basically, the new demo will be opened like uh, five minutes before, so I still have two minutes. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to show the configuration. I did show it, actually, for the user database. And I'm just going to show the, uh, the behavior with GMX, basically. So as you, can, as you could see, I have the, um, uh, I had my my user database, which was defined in server.xml. We are going to have a look at it in the in JMX, since basically it's still using the, the usual beans. So let's connect to that. So as you know, you have your user database. So I have the usual uh, memory user database, which is empty. And then I have my user database, which contains stuff uh, like it has users and stuff. Like it has two users, which are a test user and a Tomcat user with very secure passwords in clear text, obviously. So I'm going to connect to that. And uh, as you can see, as uh, JMX just eagerly pulled all the data from the database and it created the corresponding uh, bins, which are compatible with the uh, older uh, user database. So then you can actually do stuff like add a role or remove a role, uh, like my Tomcat user here. Uh, let's see. No, that's not the right table. Okay, that's user roles, okay. My Tomcat user, it has a manager GUI role. So if we connect to it, if we connect to the manager web app. Ah. 
Tomcat, so see it connects. Then I can actually remove the role as I was using doing with uh, uh, memory user database. So I'm going to remove the manager GUI <coughs> role. Okay, then. So then the access is denied. If we have a look at the database, however, it will not change, it will still be the same because I didn't hit save. So now if I go there and hit the save button, uh, it will unregister all the bins to save memory, basically. If you dearly pulled everything, once your modifications are committed, and then it has only one rules. So basically it's a dynamic version of the thing. <clears throat> and so now it's persisted. And if I go back, for example, and just add, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to add back the role just for fun. So basically that adds more liveness. Maybe it's useful when testing or whatever, doing pre-deployment or test, just testing. It's more, more dynamic than the, than the usual realm or the, all the stuff. And so now I have access again without logging on and off basically. <clears throat> Uh, it's not persisted to the database as with, uh, basically that's for being uh, compatible with the uh, XML based uh, user database. It will only persist when hitting the save operation. <clears throat> so I'm going to save it again. And then my role will be here. Yeah. <clears throat> so my manager agree that is now persisted. All right, quick demo. <laughs> And I think I'm done now. Yeah, uh, Brooke Heidrich asked about uh, hashing and stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's a realm. So uh, you have a credential handler and uh, then your hashed passwords get uh, handled by the credential handler and you can uh, use whatever hashing scheme you want. Uh, it's the same for all realms. So it's just a realm like the others. So. I'm not using any credential handler since it makes my, my life a bit easier for the demo. But yeah, basically hashing is, is allowed and supported, thankfully. <laughs> right. <laughs> no problem. Questions? So th thanks a lot for joining. I think we are all done right now.